This stream is cleared for takeoff. Hello, Simmers. Welcome to our end of the year Microsoft Flight Simulator developer stream. My name is Jane. I am the senior community manager for Microsoft Flight Simulator, your host today. Thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us for today's stream. As you can see, Marcel is unable to make it today, but we have two fantastic people on to talk about all things Flight Sim. First, welcome back, Jorg Newman, head of Microsoft Flight Simulator. How are you doing, Jorg? I'm doing great. It's been a few months. It has. Glad, back. Glad you're back. Thank you. Second, welcome back, Sebastian Vlock, CEO of Visobo Studio. How have you been, Seb? Hi. Happy to be back. Happy to have you both. Um, I already see some questions rolling in, so I'll take this time to just go over our schedule of events for this stream so everyone knows what's happening. So first of all, we'll talk about, of course, our re latest release, 40th Anniversary Edition. Um, at that point, we're going to be asking everyone here for feedback and questions from the 40th and how your experience has been. We'll also go over, you know, how it's been on our side, a couple uh, feedback items we definitely want to discuss with y'all. After that, we'll talk about 2023, what you can expect from us in the coming year. And we're going to follow that up with a fantastic presentation from Matt Nishan at Working Title and a surprise update from one of our aircraft developers. And at the end of the stream, we'll be answering some of your questions and we'll have a discussion on some of the questions and feature requests that we received in the forums. So that's our schedule of events. I hope everyone enjoys. So we're going to kick it off to Jorg to start our presentation. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here and um, happy birthday. Happy birthday to the 40th uh, of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I know some of you have been here since the very beginning. So let's go celebrate. We had a, we had a chance to celebrate the 40th in style at uh, the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum in McMinnville, Oregon last week. And I thought I should give you a quick mini tour. I'll keep it really short, but we had such a fantastic day. I just thought we'll share something. Yeah. So we invited 30 creators and press from around the world. They all came. Uh, we started the day in a huge theater um, with my favorite quote from Da Vinci that I look at every single morning when I get to work and talked a little bit about the history of the franchise. 40 years, six times best sim, 30 plus million simmers. And that is before Flight Sim 2020, by the way. And then we quickly talked um, about the time since launch and that we did 27 updates in 27 months, which was fun and kind of shocking in the way. And then um, we talked about the top three community wishes and we started with the A310, uh, which we went into some detail with. I think a lot of you tried it already, so we can talk about this later. Uh, SEP then demoed helicopters and all the cool innovations that went into the development of that. Marcial, who is not here today, demoed gliders and he nailed the landing at the very end, barely, I might add. Um, <laughs> and then we talked about some classic planes, including the Spruce Goose, which was super appropriate because that's the museum where we were in McMinnville that houses the Spruce Goose. Then we had a quick Q&A. That was fun. Uh, and, and I felt it felt really connected to the community. So it was great. And then uh, just couldn't resist to put that picture in there. Um, <laughs> Uh, Sergio peppered us with helicopter questions, in particular, Seb. <laughs> and I'm, I don't know if Sergio is here, but it was great fun to see you there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and that was basically the setup. Then we went over to the other museum, um, which was basically, what's cool about that is there are a bunch of docents there that are super knowledgeable. They explained everything to people who attended. Um, so here they are. I've learned a ton from those folks just, just talking to them. And then I had wanted to show a picture of the spruce goose outside of the cockpit and just how huge this thing is. It's we always say, oh, it's the biggest plane in the world. Yeah, wow, it's like a ship, crazy. And then then here's a picture from the other side, which is what's the setup where where everybody was uh, was playing and simming. And then the next picture shows uh, looking, yep, people hard at work testing the 40th anniversary edition. We had a bunch of cool interviews. We celebrated a bit here with how to use his hat. We made a special wine. That's <laughs> so pretty that's cool. Wine. Okay. <laughs> and it was a true, I mean, look, it was a truly wonderful day. And it was just great to celebrate with members of the community and the press. And then I, well, I think what's cool about this 40th is this, I put this together, you know, for everyone. When we launched in 2020, we had 20 planes in the standard edition. Now we have 37. And that's 
that's cool. And we also have a new visual ID for what it's worth, right? We worked on this quite a bit. Uh, just to, to basically pay tribute that we now have helicopters and, and gliders going forward. So I just wanted to give you the quick, super quick, hey, here's what we did. It was, it was, it was great, something else. It, it felt like we honored the franchise appropriately. All right. Uh, and I think now we're going over to the first Q&A session. Jane, you want yep. to go? Absolutely. So thank you, Jorg. So let's discuss 40th anniversary edition with you, chat. Um, if you have any questions about it in particular, how it went for you, any feedback, please feel free to share it now. Um, we're definitely going to be answering some questions here. Uh, I already have a couple lined up that I would love to ask while we see questions rolling in. Um, one is for you, Seb. I have a couple helicopter questions I've been seeing throughout the forums and everywhere else on socials. Um, so now that helicopters are officially in the sim, do we plan to continue to improve the flight model and the helicopters themselves? Um, I would say yes. So um, mm. um, basically the, sim, the helicopters have been put out uh, in a state where we, we went all the way we could, we could go um, using uh, the feedback of uh, pilots, uh, instructors. Um, basically, we're now in the state where we're waiting for feedback from the community and also from people who would make helicopters. Um, if there's requests uh, for new features, feedback on improving the, the flight model, we will listen um, mm -hmm. while we work on, a, I would say, on a, on a, on a plan for, for bigger improvements uh, for the far, for longer future. But short term, right now, we, are, we, are, we have time to, uh, to make improvements, fixes, anything that would be reported. Um, so I've booked some time for that. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, looking forward to feedback. Awesome. Thanks, Seb. I know, you know, helicopters are a different beast. I learned that this week in our helicopter stream with Sergio from Hellasimmer. Um, throughout that stream and in general, a lot of the community was wondering if we ever plan on adding some type of helicopter tutorial in the sim. Seb, do you want to answer this? <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so there is no tutorial right now um, mm -hmm. because a uh, helicopter uh, flying, uh, from, from my experience, is mostly about uh, uh, about the flying, right? It's, uh, I mean, uh, when I flew, I did exactly the same circuits than I did on a, on a Cessna. Uh, navigation was very close. Everything was close except controlling the, and taxiing because mm -hmm. we taxied in the air. Um, so what we thought, it's, it was much more important to have a, a, a good assistance because the, the difficult part is controlling the, the helicopter. Um, I, I would agree that yeah, helicopter uh, tutorials would be great. Uh, but as we had only time to do one tutorial gliders where, where I would say the flying is close to uh, any airplane, but uh, it's more important about uh, how do you launch, how do you, how do you get up in the air? There's, there was a lot more to learn about um, outside of just the simple control of the aircraft, which we chose gliders. Um, so uh, maybe down the road, but right now um, for the flying, um, um, yeah, the assistants do a great job. And, and uh, the other, I mean, the hint I, I got is just, uh, well, the, the, there's not so much to explain. You got to feel it and, and uh, turn on assistances when you get comfortable, turn off the cyclic um, and do a few hours, right? And when you're comfortable, turn back on the cyclic and then turn off the rudder assistance. That's going to be difficult, especially uh, hovering. And when you're comfortable, then you can try turning off both. Um, but I mean, except getting in the hours, um, there is not much uh, uh, on, the, on the pure flying that, uh, that I could say. I mean, yeah, we can explain the whole physics and everything. Um, and I think there's a little bit of that in the, in the introductory flight in the, in the flight you get on the, on the main screen. Uh, and of course, yeah, maybe in the future, there's going to be more, uh, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I would say I just I was just reading the thread while Seb was was answering. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully by now, you know, a little over two years in, you know that we read the forums religiously. We pay attention to what you're saying. Um, when people say, "Hey, gliders need work, helicopters need work," you can always make things better. We will pay attention. And if helicopter tutorials is something that people really, really are needing, we'll do it. It's just a question of time. So mm -hmm. just keep 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 the feedback coming, please. Perfect. Thank you, Seb and Mar uh, Seb <laughs> York. So great question I'm seeing in chat here about the co connection error. This is the error that users get whenever there's a blip in the online service. 
Um, it's been noted as it can be distracting, especially if they're on final, so they have to click OK and then gain control of their aircraft. Is this something that you'd be able to change or improve for future updates? Um, so yeah, I think uh, improving would be easy, right? It's not a, we can. Uh, so I, I, this is the first time I hear this and I think the error has been out there for a while. So thank you for the feedback. Uh, I think the goal of making this very visible is that uh, uh, we see quite a lot of people who are actually uh, sending uh, images or videos and, and are in offline mode and don't always realize. Uh, so we wanted it to make, we wanted it to be very clear when people were losing online connection. Um, and and we look at maybe uh, adding a way to uh, to mute this thing, or or, or something like that. Uh, of course, if if that's a, a request, we will, we will work on that. Absolutely, thanks, Seb. And the other piece of feedback I'd like to talk about is on Xbox. So many users have reported there's been a reduced level of detail on Xbox. I know you've been looking into it this week. Do you have any information to share with us on what might be causing it? Yeah, unfortunately, this is a is a is a something that got broken that uh, was not caught uh, during testing. Um, so uh, we we looked into it and it was uh, we were lucky it was not too long to find a fix. Uh, explanation is very simple: is that there's a, there's a, basically there's a a system in the on the console because the console has a limited resources. In, I mean, PC also has limited resources, but um, uh, way more than than we need. Um, and so there's a system which protects the, the, the memory and performance on console. Uh, if the content is too heavy or if there's too much stuff going on, uh, we turn down detail. Usually this, this does not kick in at all. And it is based on uh, frame time, right? If the frame time gets really slow, we say, okay, maybe there's too much going on at this time in the sim. And we tune down uh, uh, some detail slider. Unfortunately, um, with some work on, I think, DirectX 12 or recent work, um, the, the frame time measure got uh, changed or broken. And so um, basically the same thinks it's running slower than it is and it's turning down detail. Uh, so this is already fixed and uh, it's going to come out in, in one of the future updates uh, as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. So it was not deliberate, right? It was a, an accident that unfortunately we didn't caught, catch during flighting or, or, or test. Yeah. Sure. So now that the issue has been identified with working on the fix, um, like one of the users here wants to know, uh, in the future, will you still will be you be able to balance stability with vis visual quality on Xbox going forward? Um, so yes, I mean the 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 what what we have in in place is a system that. Uh, automatically adjusts things when it's getting too heavy, but we mm. also, on the other hand, try to optimize uh, constantly. Um, we're always, I mean, even even now, we're always still making little improvements and, and making everything more efficient, which every time we do that also um, benefits back into the PC. I mean, at some point in the future, uh, uh, we, we will uh, probably reach a, a limit, right, where we can't just make things better anymore and uh, and uh, uh, where the detail will not just be able to grow. Uh, but for the moment, yeah, that's that's our, our plan is that we have the system which automatically adjusts and we continue to improve uh, things where, wherever we catch improvements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a question in the forums, a couple questions about snow and some visuals to go along with here. So the snow question was, will we ever get rid of the snow on runways, taxiways, aprons, and roads is the first question. Uh, yeah, so um, um, yeah, I was surprised by this question because actually snow got introduced on uh, Christmas 2020 and uh, we did have a system to uh, remove the snow on uh, on runways and streets and everything. So I was surprised about this and then yeah, I checked uh, the sim now. It's, it's yeah, it's winter now. Uh, I mean almost and there's more snow around and I say, oh yeah, uh, the snow is back on the streets and uh, what, what's going on. So I actually earlier this year, maybe around same update nine, the, the snow removal on roads and runways got broken. And maybe because it's the summer, uh, it wasn't that much uh, visible or, or noted. Um, and so now that it got report, we, we saw it. And uh, it, it was also same thing, very easy fix uh, to get that back to working as it was uh, probably last winter. And same thing then the LOD change, we will push this out as soon as we can with an upcoming update. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, unintended uh, and did not get noticed.
probably because I mean most of the people are in summer and didn't have snow. Mm. Yeah, and the second part of that question is, yeah, will we see high quality snow coverage so we don't see snow and frozen water? It shouldn't be like in the Alps, Norway, Alaska. Yeah, so I did a, a, a quick investigation. Here's the, the place that got reported. And indeed, the, currently we have a, a, a data coming from the live weather provider, which tells us, hey, this is, this is how much snow there is in this area. And indeed, the area resolution is a few kilometers. It's quite big, which actually works most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but when, uh, in this case, the, the valleys are extremely narrow and deep, like I think it's uh, two or more kilometers deep. And so there's mount there's snow in the top of the of the valley on the on the side, and uh, the bottom is completely snow free, and so it looks like this uh, yeah completely snowy area. Um, if you go to the next screen, I looked at the data that is actually out there. Mm. Um, there, there is data which has enough uh, on the next uh, yeah which has enough accuracy. Uh, so um, and yeah you can see clearly there's only snow on the on the top. So basically, this is something we need to improve in the future. So have discussion with the data provider. Um, how can we get better data? And so the data is there. It's just about the time and and uh, and how fast we can implement this. But I think it's there is a hope that this can get better. Yeah. This is actually related to something that's in the chat here about the weather radar API. Mm -hmm. so we have a we have a quarterly sync with with Meteor Blue, and this we're going to bring both of these things up. This one, the resolution is there, but we're not currently seeing it in the sim. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then people want access to the, the the weather via the API differently than the two D map that we're currently giving. That's something we need to chat with them about. But we have some we have all kinds of things. We have future features that we're going to discuss with them as well. So we'll mm -hmm. we'll get back to you early next year with answers on this. Perfect. Thanks, Evan. Jorg, um, so I'm seeing a question going back to the Xbox LOD mentioned a fix coming soon. They're wondering, um, is does soon mean like next week in this beta branch or in a future flighting? Um, do you have any information on that, Seb? I do. So I think this yes, is the, li the likely scenario is that it's coming from in mid January. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is we all looked at each other. Seb, Seb said, "Hey, I found the bug," and I said. Darn, it's gonna take us. It's gonna take us a little bit, and there's obviously snow. <laughs> but it's we have a we have a we have a flight going already that we can't interject this into. Um, that's why basically we have to wait till this is over, and then mm. you get it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next question for Seb about um, weather. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch. Okay. So this was from the forums asking about, um, they were going through the Feature Discovery Series 3 aerodynamics video, and they're wondering about some of the features that were showcased in it, volumetric clouds to match turbulence, up and down drafts, towering cumulus clouds, um, up and down drafts to match actual weather, and they're wondering, they feel like this is missing, they're wondering if you could go over some of these features um, and how you feel about them, if you think it's missing or if it's there and they're missing it. So uh, I mean I can I can answer right now if you if you're done with the question Jane. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, yes, so everything we showed in the video, uh, feature discovery three I think was captured in the sim. Everything is in the sim. Um, so I, I just showed a, a screenshot of a whatever. So in 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 preset weather you can pretty much make anything of I mean you can't do everything but you can do a lot of things. So all the uh, thunderstorm cloud formation whatever you can do all that. In live weather, well, it's really depending a lot on the live weather we data we get. Some some thunderstorms do have a pretty high cloud sometimes, mostly in the summer. I mean, I just looked outside uh, this morning driving into work. There was actually something which felt and looked like a cumulus, towering cumulus cloud. The only thing is that it's it's like pretty cold uh, now also here too. And the thing was barely three kilometers high, but it really looked like a mini towering cumulus cloud with rain on the bottom. Um, and so, well, it, it's it's... There's way less sun right now. The same things exist here. Uh, now they're smaller, the updraft is smaller. And that's the kind of stuff you would get then in the live weather data. Whereas in June, we have here like a giant storm sometimes where the, it's maybe 12 or, or more kilometers high. And so this is all in live weather. It's very much depending on the, on the data we get, but it can do everything that the weather preset can do, which is uh, um, as many like structures as you want, uh, which can take the form of a thunderstorm. Um, the, the drafts are, uh, I mean, I'm going to give a little bit of history on the turbulence and drafts. Um, so they were there since launch. 
At launch, we had an automatic uh, simulation of airflow in the world that was doing hills, slopes, uh, houses, buildings, trees, and, uh, and basically obstacles. It was simulating the airflow around obstacles and clouds were, were, were sort of uh, pushing the air upwards in the middle and downwards. So it was creating some sort of uh, airflow on clouds. Um, any other turbulence if you were outside of a cloud or in the air was just pure random. It was a, uh, depending on the wind speed, there was some random turbulences which were, which were generated. Uh, a bit later, I think that was in 21, we added support for water um, surfaces. So that basically turbulence and everything is different on water, uh, still the same system. And earlier this year, and I think it was similar at nine, we changed the system for turbulences and said, hey, now we want to have realistic up and down drafts in preparation for the gliders. So we introduced in similar at nine, a thermal simulation. So it really calculates the sun coming in, the angle. So in the winter, there's much less energy or at night, there's no energy, depending on the slope of the hills, uh, how much energy is coming, reduced by clouds or uh, air, like uh, if the air is clean or whatever. And then uh, it hits the ground, there's the ground albedo, ground type if it's forest, all that cre creates a heat on the ground, which heats, just heats the air. And if the air is hotter than the uh, average around surrounding air, it goes up. And when it's colder, it goes down. Um, um, so we introduced that in Simmer Bit 9, uh, which uh, pretty, I mean, what we did is we tried to have the turbulence intensity being about the same. Uh, it's just that they're not random anymore. If you, if you look down, you will find something that generates turbulence, which actually makes sense. Uh, and that was in preparation for the gliders. However, since launch, uh, vertical wind speed has always been limited to 1,000 feet per minute. Uh, then on Simmer Bit 10, the only change we did is we increased the limit to 1,500. Basically, looking at the feedback, well, if everything is crazy, we would have fixed it. But if people said, hey, that's, that's not too, too crazy, it's too weak sometimes, we, we made it bigger. What we changed also just to, in some of the 10, we made it so that turbulence is still, the, it's, it's depending on the wind. So if there's no wind, like if you turn wind to zero, you can remove turbulence. Unfortunately, we don't have a turbulence button or slider where you can turn it off. But you need to know that if you don't want any turbulence, just take the wind, turn it to zero. You will not have any drafts, nothing. It's going to be completely clean air, mm -hmm. um, which is something which is temporary. Uh, at some point, we're going to introduce turbulence UI, and then you're going to have a lot more control. Um, and, and we'll have wind without turbulence or turbulence without wind and all that. Yeah. And then the change in some of the 11 for the glider is really just <clears throat> a visualization of everything that was always there. Um, we unlocked the maximum vertical speed to 2,000 uh, feet per minute. So it's the same intensity. It's just it can go higher up. And uh, uh, the, only, the only change is really that we, um, we introduced the conservation of energy so that um, um, you can't have something where in a desert everything goes up everywhere, um, which is not possible. If something goes up somewhere, it has to go back down somewhere else. So what we do is we, we basically conserve energy and... Uh, where there's most, the most updraft, it goes up, and then somewhere else, it has to go back down. So that can be water or, or forest. Or if it's in the desert, I checked a lot of desert. I checked all sorts of areas in the world. In the desert, there was some darker rock that was going more up, and then the more sandy area was going back down. So it tries to create this sort of, well, it's going up, pushing down, and, and, and like this. The clouds still work the same. Uh, they also have an energy conservation now. So in, if you have a, Cloudy sky, it's going up in the in the cloud, it's going back down all around. Um, so uh, depending on uh, if you have a, a few clouds only, there's going to be more updraft under the clouds, but very little downdraft around. Um, if you have a, a, a less uh, area where there's no cloud, well, there's less area for air to go down, so it's going to go down stronger. Uh, and so that's the current state here. Um, we're looking for feedback, and I'm, we're starting to get a lot. Um, What's also important is that you have the visualization which was introduced with the glider. You also have a new dev menu. I think that's in one of the screenshots here. If you go into the dev menu, dev, uh, dev mode, uh, in the options, you can, at the bottom, you see experimental and there's some weather debugging um, window that you can now turn up. And there you see all the data that we have, whether uh, mm -hmm. it's the data that we get from the provider, the calculations that we make, how we compute the energy, everything's there. And you have more visualization debug modes where you can turn on to see how the wind is reacting. Our goal with that is that people 
who have feedback um, can see the tools, can see the data, and give us more. Um, uh, uh, I mean, basically, basically, give us facts, right? Say, hey, this should be this much, or this is not working right, uh, mm -hmm. because you you can't see turbulence, right? So you are you have to talk about something that you can't see, that you just feel, and it's hard to describe. Now there's tools which allow to to allow us to get this better, and then we have our own plans to make this better. Um, I, I, I think I talked about a, a full CFD simulation. So currently it's sort of partial. It does some of the energy conservation, but it doesn't have everything. Uh, so this is still in R&D. We're, we're basically going to move forward step by step and get the whole atmospheric flow um, more realistic. Uh, I mean, based on feedback too, right? I think it's already a very big uh, step forward. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and also as soon as we get some UI, which allows to control turbulences, then we can really go free and say, hey, yeah. there's 20,000 feet per minute upwind like you could get in the worst storms now, but users have a way to, to turn it down, right? Let's say you're in an area, you wanna fly live weather, there's a giant storm, but you don't want that much turbulence because you can, you would not be able to fly with this sorts, and this sorts of plane. We need that additional control uh, to limit turbulences, which we don't have right now. Yeah, great. Thank you, Seb. All right, we will move on to the future. So Jorg, I'll kick it off to you for a roadmap. Roadmap, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, basically, I'm, I'm waiting for the slide to show up. It's there. <laughs> oh, really? Fine. All right, so the <laughs> next one. So I was uh, looking back quickly at Roadmap 2022. Yes. And what's cool is that our little advanced calendar is now full. And, and, and I would say, what a year it's been. Five world updates, a city update, six local legends, three famous flyers. And then we com combined a lot of things we had planned into the 40th. And that was all free, so that's cool. So the four, seven classic planes, gliders, da 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 da, and then we launched on XCloud, which doubled our audience. That made me happy. <laughs> uh, then Maverick in May, I think, was a highlight for many. Uh, the Pelican was it was kind of cool. So it was overall a a a, a great year. Um, and I would say before we close the year, there's there's one more thing we're doing, which is not on these types of things. Uh, for those of you who are into local legends, Oliver has been hard at work to make improvements to the three planes that he shipped. So the, the Junkers 52, the Doj, and the F-13 are all planned to get an update in early December. Nice. And he, he, he added a bunch of features, so it's gonna be cool. And then I had a lot of fun last, last weekend after the event uh, to put on put down the grid for 2023. Whee! And uh, the funniest thing about it was I had to make the boxes smaller because there's even more things we're doing. So we're planning currently, this is not 100% locked, things move around, you know, but um, four world updates are planned, maybe five. Uh, I heard loud and clear, somebody said in the chat too, city updates, people like those. So we're making, we're planning on three of them. Um, seven local legends, seven famous flyers, sim updates, AAUs, more to that here in a second. Ooh. And then three surprises, those are always fun. Uh, and we're starting in January with, the AAU, and to, to explain what that all is, Matt Nishan is here from Working Title. Go, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me on. It's uh, super cool to talk about this. Um, yeah, so as Jorg said, we've got this new thing. It's called AAU. What is AAU? It's Aircraft and Avionics Updates. So we're, it's a thing where we're going to focus specifically on, uh, you know, certain aircraft kind of very targeted, um, you know, specific avionics systems. Um, and we're really going to kind of dial in um, a lot of the stuff that exists in the sim today is going to be improved. There may be some things that don't exist, you know, you guys will have to find out. Um, but that's, uh, that's kind of what the, the spirit of, of the, you know, aircraft and avionics updates are going to be. Um, and the other thing that we heard loud and clear from you guys is, you know, you wanted to have the things that were in the sim, like the premium planes, you know, you want you, you wanted to see more effort put into those and, and those evolve over time as some of the other planes have evolved over time. And so we we heard you guys loud and clear and we are definitely gonna be bringing uh, some great stuff uh, coming up here soon, uh, which we can talk about, right? Absolutely. Um. So um, yeah, so we're, you guys may have already seen uh, the GNS 430W, 530W, it's in the marketplace right now. Um, that is going to become uh, more of a default in some planes in, uh, in AAU1 um, and uh, in just some, some stuff about this. So uh, we went and we really kind of did the GNS from the ground up. 
um, kind of like we've done with other systems. Uh, it, it looks, you know, almost identical to the real thing. It's got the next gen flight plan stuff, full RNAV procedure previews. We've got the keyboard entry mode, which we know you guys liked a lot about the G1000. Um, it's a lot easier than sometimes it's hard. You know, you're speaking of, we are just talking about a lot of turbulence, you know, those little knobs and turbulence can get a little bit tricky. So, you know, you can click uh, the input field and just type into it. And that's, it's kind of a shortcut. Um, and we've got, we kind of went pretty deep on this too. We've got, you know, ADSB, the TAS traffic system. It works exactly like the real traffic system does, but straight to, you know, the specifications. Um, and speaking of going crazy, we've got a full GPS simulation now. It tracks the positions of the satellites in the sky. It tells you if you've got, you know, the, the right navigational accuracy for, uh, you know, RNAV approaches. Uh, it's SBAS for all the all the nerds out there. Um, and we did a bunch of other stuff too. We've got the nearest pages and the waypoint pages and stuff like that and maps and stuff. And so we've got a couple of screenshots to show you. We won't do a super big set of screenshots, but we've got a couple here. Um, first one here, just uh, we're kind of overhauled the, the boot up. Um, so I know the little details are fun for folks. It kind of increases immersion. Um, so we've got a whole like boot up screen now. Uh, with the, you know, power on self test and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then also um, kind of after this, we're showing uh, our full GPS simulation. So again, you can see the positions of the satellites there. Those are real on the menu. We're using orbital, orbital mechanics to plot those um, and to make sure you have the right signal uh, that uses SBAS and you can see those at the end there. Um, and then the next one we got here is we are also doing um, the VNAV calculation page. Um, now the GNS doesn't have a full coupled VNAV that's that's outside of the capabilities of the real world unit, um, but it does have this VNAV calculation page, which is super nice. Um, and it allows you to kind of calculate your vertical speeds that you might need and, and get a descent profile and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, it's really super, uh, super handy. So that's, that's the first thing. And that's going to be, like I said, default not in every plane, um, but we're going to bring it to some planes because it requires a few changes. Um, and uh, yeah, that's so, so we'll be bringing that. Um, and then uh, I know everybody has been waiting for the CJ4 uh, sort of overhaul for a long time. Um, it's taken us a little bit of time, but we, we took the mod and we said, you know what, that's great, but we're not going to use any of that. You know, we're going we're gonna to start fresh. We're going to get it with all the framework that we built, like with the NXI and now with the GNS. Um, and really kind of make it at, at that same level. So we've got some improved soundscape that's coming. We've got a totally overhauled uh, flight model, um, which has been really fun to fly. Um, we've got uh, the, you know, the, the avionics that are in the unit, uh, they're getting totally uh, overhauled as far as the visuals go. And even though we were very, very close to the visuals before, um, folks that fly the plane in real life and, and other folks that are really into it are gonna see the differences, uh, which is really nice. Also has the next gen flight plan stuff, which the mod did not. Um, so, you know, you've got RFs, RF legs, intercepts, all the crazy complex procedures and, and arcs and all that stuff is in there. Um, one thing that people have been asking for for a long time uh, is the split MFC or the split, sorry, yeah, M <laughs> FMCs and MFDs. Uh, and those have their own settings. You can store them separately, you can set them up totally separately. And that's really handy, especially for having, you know, the, the tuning page on, on the co-pilot side and maybe the legs page on the pilot side. Uh, so that'll be super neat. Uh, we got an improved cast. Uh, so the crew alert messages are all on the MFD now, the co-pilot MFD as they are on the real plane. And we added a whole bunch of new messages um, and we've got a new FMC message system. So you see a bunch of things like, uh, you know, a lot of the V messages or VNAV messages will pop up now. So if you've got, you know, cross track error and things like that, Full TCAS2, again, spec accurate. You'll get traffic alerts, resolution alerts. Uh, we did bring in keyboard entry mode again. Uh, we know it's super popular, so, you know, convenience. Just click on it, type in. Um, we've got uh, even enhanced the VNAV that we had in the mod. This is this is even more, a little bit more advanced. We handle a couple more edge cases. Um, and we did the, the details like the boot up screen and stuff like that. So got a couple of screenshots here too of the CJ4. Um, this uh, first one here, um, just showing some of the more advanced flight plan stuff. You can see we've got this crazy kind of RF uh, leg approach. Um, you know, we've got this hole depicted on the, uh, the missed approach there. Um, and you can see that we've got different things up on the two MFDs. They're, they're totally different. One's in plan mode, one's not. 
Uh, we got different stuff up on, on the FMCs. It's super fun. It's a lot of fun to fly. Um, and then similarly on the next screenshot here, just a nice overview of all the different screens. Got the tuning page up on the right side. Um, you've got the FMS text up on the right side, so you can kind of keep track of everything. It's a little bit easier. Um, and then on the next one there, uh, kind of a similar view, um, just a little bit closer. Um, and with the FMX, FMS text, you can have kind of the flight plan that you've got going on. So um, yeah, we're really excited about that. I think the CJ4 is going to be is going to be a blast to fly. Uh, hopefully, you know, a lot of the things that that were weird with the mod are are addressed here too. So that's that's really cool. Um, and then um, something that I know people are really excited about is the Garmin G3000 and G5000 um, updates. So we've gone again, kind of a ground up um, approach to this. Um, you will not be able to tell the difference if you take a screenshot of our unit and the real unit. They look completely the same. It is, it's wild. Um, super, super proud of everybody that worked on it, even the little animations um it's it's just a kind of a visual delight to use and super snappy again next gen flight plan um it actually has two types of vnav uh the real units do have this they have a, a more limited version which is kind of like what's on the nxi and then there's an advanced version um which like the longitude has um everything is split pfds mfds gtc's split you know separate uh separate settings um we I know a lot of people have been asking for user-defined waypoints, especially in the NXI. We did develop the tech for that finally, and that is going to be in the G3000, and we'll be porting that back to other units sort of as we go forward in the future and future um, aircraft and avionics updates. Um, again, the full GPS simulation, we've got uh, you know RNAV support, um, waynav or uh, waypoint pages, all that stuff. And one of the cool things is we've got plugin support for developers. So developers that want to use the G3000, uh, they can actually get into this by loading a separate JavaScript plugin, um, and they don't have to fork. They don't have to fork the code. We just kind of load up their stuff, and it will slot right into the engine instruments, to the GTCs screens, all that stuff. It's really super cool. So just a couple of screenshots again on this. Uh, the first one here, um, just kind of showing the uh, the couple VNAV. Um, in the TBM. I know people will be excited about that. I wanted to fly uh, VNAV in the TBM for a while. Um, on the next one, we're showing the split PFDs. Uh, again, sort of on the TBM here. Um, and it's really cool. Having split PFDs is really fun because, you know, it, it's nice to have like a map up on the right side and your PFD gets a little bit more condensed and stuff. It's, it's, it's super neat. Um, and then uh, on the, uh, the next screenshot here, we're showing uh, making a custom waypoint. So you can do lat long, you can do distance and radial, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's it's really, it's, it's super cool. Um, and then uh, just a few small things here on the TBM. Um, so we are doing some EIS tweaks. Um, as you could see, the, I think the, the EIS you could see in one of the screenshots there, more visual accuracy. Obviously, it includes the new G3000, so all the work that went into that to integrate that into the TBM. Uh, we did model the electrical system, so that's uh, that's that's modeled now. We ported, you know, the, the sim has that new electrical system. We ported our, the, the stuff into that, which was super great, um, and did a few tweaks on top, system synoptics. And uh, the, the doors, I know there have been some, some sort of unofficial mods for doors for a mm -hmm. while, but uh, we got the doors opening now for you guys, so it's all, it's all official. Um, and we got uh, kind of saw some screenshots of the avionics, but um, this this next screenshot here is is the door. The door is <laughs> open. So if you need to exit for whatever reason, you you can now. So that's good. Nice, nice. Um, and then I know uh, very much awaited. Um, we've we heard you all loud and clear. People said the longitude is a premium plane. We don't feel like it flies like a premium plane. Well, it's gonna fly like a premium plane now. Um, again, it's got the advanced VNAV, we've got path smoothing, you can edit all of the altitude restrictions, your flight path angles, uh, the auto throttle is completely accurate to the real thing, all the real auto throttle modes exist, they work like the real thing does, again, the full traffic system, um, we do have performance calculations that, you know, are direct from real data, this is, this is not fake stuff, um, and it will get you the real speeds of the real aircraft, and then after that, the systems are they're very deep. Um, we've got a whole bleed air simulation. It affects how the engines start. It affects, you know, can you start things? It goes into the environmental control system. Uh, is your cabin going to be pressurized? 
um, full hydraulics uh, simulation. We've got, you know, we're doing some crazy stuff, right? We're doing, what are the temperature of the hydraulic systems? And it's based on what the pressures are that are coming in, um, you know, where things are being routed, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got the, the PTCU, which is kind of a longitude unique thing. It's a hydraulic uh, power transfer and control unit. It takes electrical power and makes hydraulic power, or it takes hydraulic power and makes electrical power. All the modes of that are fully simulated. Uh, the fuel system, we also built on top of the super great Microsoft, you know, the flight sim fuel system. Um, we didn't have to do a lot, but we did enough to kind of make it feel realistic. Again, temperatures, pressures, all the automatic routing logic, pressurization system, which has the 100% the accurate, you know, climb and descent schedules from the real plane. Um, the electrical system with all the automatic bus tie logic on the ground. And you'll see, I, I say here, norm. So uh, the longitude is a cool plane. A lot of the systems work sort of without you having to do a lot as a pilot. So it keeps the workload low for pilots. Um, so when the plane is in norm, there's a lot of automatic logic happening. And when you open the synoptics pages, you can kind of see that logic in action and it's all happening in the background for real. Um, so this is going to be a super deep plane and we think people are going to are going to really like it. So got a couple screenshots here of that. Uh, the first one Watch here we've got. Too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the the first screenshot here we're just showing the hydraulics uh, synoptic page, um, the new EIS. You can see we've got the landing elevation, all that stuff is properly automated. Um, we model the hydraulic accumulators with the PTCU icon in here. On the next one, we've got the the advanced VNAV that we're showing. Uh, you can see all the different uh, constraints altitudes, flight plan, uh, flight path angles, all that stuff. And then real quick on the last page, kind of just the, the grandiose cockpit view. Um, you can see we've got both PFD split. We've got the pre-flight page, which has uh, real tests and the tests are actually performed at the right times, um, as well as uh, you can see the, the, uh, you know, the ECS page here, which is showing the path of the bleed air and all that stuff also operates and the logic does the thing. So. We think you guys will really be happy. We think it's it's going to be something that people will be proud to own in the in the premium package, um, and we you know we hope that uh, we hope it kind of reinforces that we are in this for the long haul. We want to you know give you guys the best the best stuff that we possibly can you know uh, to fly with. So, mm -hmm. hey Matt, is this all for January? I believe it is, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. There's two all more of these it. things coming in 2023. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean seriously, we we heard you, right? I mean, we we honestly we felt bad uh, about the premium plans got got underserved over time, and that is all going to get rectified this next year. So thank you for waiting and the Fed for the patience. But yeah, I agree with the with the chat. The combo of Asobo making the base sim and you know, making this whole thing work, and then on top of that, you have a specialist group like like Working Title is, is an awesome combo. Mm -hmm. So I hope you all will enjoy it. Yep, we're we're super excited. I know the joke on our server has been on or before uh, December thirty first. That will still be true. There will be a flighting for this stuff. Uh, so you know we'll we'll get that stuff in your hands. You can test it, and we'll get feedback. And we do want to make it the best we can be. So uh, it's we're super excited. Mm -hmm. Incredible work. Thank you for sharing, Matt. And as always, we appreciate you joining us for our stream. Uh, I think you know it's very obvious from chat that we're all very excited about this. Um, we'll see you soon. I can't wait for January. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. So, Jorg, we have our next announcements. Well, it's stuff we should have talked about a while ago. We got a little bit out of rhythm because the 40th was such a monster. But, um, yeah, I mean, so is there another slide, Jane? I don't even say the slide. There is. It's the announcement slide. So if you're ready, <laughs> I think I'm ready. The next <laughs> All right. world up. The next world update. Is that it? Yep. Next world update. Twelve. Very happy. Very happy to say it's going to be New Zealand, which was uh, much requested by many. I have to say, New Zealand. I've been there, and it's it's one of the. It's my favorite country now. It used to be Switzerland from a beauty perspective, but the New Zealand is also so nice. So they have a beautiful country and they're so nice. So we are going to update everything. Um, I'm seeing Orbex here, they did, they did most of it. Um, we have, so we have all new aerials, all new dem. I have a couple of pictures. So if you want to go, go through sure it. Sure thing. Just a few, just a tease today. Well, you know, just keep going. Just some impressions. New Zealand is beautiful. 
Yep, yep. And the summary page. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have four bespoke airports, maybe more. We're still, we're still talking to some folks. Um, we have 30 POIs right now. We'll probably make some more because we're talking to some folks. There, there are six photogrammetry cities. They're done. Uh, cool. And then we'll make landing challenges, bush trips, discovery flags, like always. And I think it's going to be a beautiful update, really, of a very beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And to go along with that, Local Legend 8. Local Legend 8. We thought about which one makes a lot of sense for New Zealand. And we landed on the De Havilland DH, DHC4 Caribou. And also it's made by Orbex. And I was hesitating to show you the first pictures. And he was like, well, it's not textured yet, but they're, they're hard at work. Um, but then I, I asked everybody else on the chat. And they're like, oh, this looks cool. So here is the <laughs> exterior. It's currently being textured. And here's the interior. And I think that the team is making tons of progress. I think it's going to be a really nice local legend. Mm -hmm. All you? coming to you, by the way, February 7th, or maybe 8th. They're still discussing because of some holiday yeah, yeah. In, in New Zealand that time. Gotcha. And then in March, and I didn't put a slide here, there's Sim Update 12. And Sim Update 12 will bring finally WASM support, which we've all been waiting for patiently. And it's going to be really cool for people on Xbox. But it is also something that held back a highly complex plane that we've also talked about for a while. And we have we have a guest, a long, a long lost friend is here today. So hey. We do. Welcome, Hans Hartman. Hello, go. good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. So can you tell us about how development has been going on the ATR? Yes, we've been hard at work all the time uh, since we started the project in January. Um, what, yeah, a little uh, uh, summary for, for people who don't know about it yet. Um, we've been working with ATR, the company ATR in Toulouse, and uh, the, the contents of the project are the ATR 42, 600, 70 to 670 to 600 freighters. Um, this is all up to um, the, yeah, where we have full support from ATR, which uh, allows us to uh, simulate the full standard free software on board. So, for example, we um, have advanced avionics, which uh, includes a synthetic vision system, means uh, you can see the, uh, the ground and, and terrain outside uh, on the PFD, like in a, in a G1000, for example. Uh, terrain awareness system, ter awareness and warning system, the TOS, uh, which is on the... Uh, upper right picture on this uh, slide that's taken from uh, Innsbruck so you can see the small valley um, rising up from the airport so everything is red and, and yellow but uh, this is the um, probably the best way to show it. Um, it also includes weather radar. Weather radar as uh, Zepp said earlier will be improved so uh, there will be, it will be, hopefully look a bit better than on this screenshot. Um, and of course, the, the ground map, uh, ground terrain, which in this case, in the left picture, would be uh, the Elbe River in Hamburg, um, in Germany. And uh, also, it also includes airport ground maps and uh, the full uh, set of ATR procedures and alerts technologies. Um, on this, these screenshots, you can see uh, in the lower area of the right display, the so-called virtual, uh, uh, virtual control panel. This, is, um, this allows you to configure your whole uh, uh, avionics. It's, it's completely unlike everything uh, I've, I've seen before. Uh, so you configure uh, your, you can set your, your frequencies for communications for VR, ILS, and ADFs. You can set your traffic and weather radar configuration. You can control uh, the synthetic vision system and uh, whatever you want to see on the MFD and PFD. 
Um, this is controlled by a panel next to the, uh, the throttle levers. Uh, however, we decided to add an optional uh, touchscreen support for this. This is not realistic, of course, but uh, it makes using these, uh, this menu a lot easier. Okay, uh, can we have the next one, Jane? Yes, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so this is another one uh, where you can see the, the avionics and uh, in this case, uh, turning on, a, on an ILS uh, for London City. Um, there's yeah nothing nothing special to add here I think. Uh, so the next yeah we're working on an electronic flight bag. This contains this is totally based on uh, real ATR data on on uh, documents they send us. Um, it can. It calculates every sort of speed, every, uh, the center of gravity, takeoff trim, and uh, whatever you like, including landing data, how many feet or meters you need to, to get the aircraft to a stop. Um, this, no matter uh, in, in, in different surface conditions as well, uh, it includes icing conditions, which um, the ATR is known for to be um, sometimes a bit challenging <clears throat> if you don't follow the, the procedures the correct way. So um, this is all included in, uh, in the electronic flight back. You get every information you would normally look up from, from the manuals. Um, and what you get is, is really beyond what is written in the FCOM or QRH. Okay, uh, can we get the next one? Yes. Okay. Um, these, uh, the, the other three pages are mostly to control the, the aircraft, open doors, closed doors, set the aircraft states um, to these four presets. Um, things like uh, updating uh, or calibrating throttles, um, for so you can use any hardware you like with the uh, with the uh, power levers and and condition levers. Um, <clears throat> it also includes maintenance functions like uh, re replacing the the fire protection system squibs. That's uh, uh, a very small explosive uh, charge which uh, opens the the bottle which. After that, it discharges the, the fire uh, extinguishing agent. And of course, to, to refill the bottles and several other things <clears throat> that come to the aircraft, belong to the aircraft maintenance. Okay, the next is systems and uh, FMS. Uh, in this one, people with eagle eyes will instantly noticed the high speed uh, upon leaving Hamburg, um, that's uh, already fixed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I prefer to say it myself before I read it elsewhere. <laughs> so um, every all the systems are uh, simulated in depth um, based on the uh, on ATR's documentation. Um, including the FMS with all calculations, including things like single engine uh, uh, cruise altitude calculation, the propeller brake means hotel mode. Hotel mode is something like uh, uh, an APU, um, but uh, it's realized by letting the right engine run and uh, stopping the propeller hydraulically. So. Um, all the systems are there, um, electronics, hydraulics, uh, entire eyes, and so on. Okay, uh, same for the FMS. It's two different, uh, two separate FMS uh, with, with all the pages implemented, except for there are a few hover and tactical pages in the documentation, 
but those uh, are not uh, probably not available in a civilian plane. Okay, from the outside, um, you can hear, uh, you can see the, the propeller brake here. This is the same screenshot from the same plane. One uh, on the left is the, the left engine, left engine is running, the right engine is not running, or the, the right propeller is not moving. On the right side, you can see uh, that the left engine is running and the right engine produces torque, but uh, the propeller brake is on and it only produces power. It doesn't produce any, um, any thrust in this case. On the bottom of the screen, you can see the, the um, one of the checklists. The checklists are based on data that we received from ATR. It's this, the same, exact same data that is in the actual aircraft. There's no difference between that. So um, including uh, one typo, <laughs> but <laughs> I think we fixed that. So um, furthermore, the ATPCS, that's the, um, the system that uh, increases power on one uh, engine if the other fails on, in, uh, in, on takeoff, uh, the so-called uptrim. And of course, the, the power management system with the whole, uh, again, the whole set of data behind it for all, all possible modes um, from takeoff, max, maximum continuous torque to climb to cruise mode, uh, including reserved takeoff if, if an engine fails on takeoff and uh, go around modes. So everything is in their data wise. Um, <clears throat> which um, together with the next one. Yes. Uh, yeah. With Alexander Metzger's flight model and engine model, which is, um, it, it's hard to depict how, how to, uh, how, how good this works. Um, but if you look at the uh, third column in the, in the axle part, um, you can see that everything is very close to reality, um, with just within a, sometimes within less than a percent, um, and uh, this gives this makes the aircraft really uh, fly like like the real thing in the end. <clears throat> we also have. Um, very accurate modeling of the payload uh, and all based on original load sheets, um, which also allows, uh, as you could see in the, uh, in the EFB section earlier, um, the graphs which give you a center of gravity and calculate the takeoff trim. So all this is in the, in the product. Um, I think that's yeah that's all for the for the flight and on the last uh, slide um, this is done by Asobo not by us or not by my team um, we have a full highly detailed passenger cabin which uh, also doesn't isn't is not low poly uh, so everything is is absolutely detailed and it uses lots to uh, use less polygons on the uh, far away items. So it doesn't, it's both high polygon, high quality, and it doesn't um, affect your performance, which uh, overall is, is very good uh, on the whole plane. And the final one is the favorite of most, I think, um, the document door, this time in a, mm -hmm. in a uh, further state than with when uh, I did the last dev q and in May. Um, you can even see the, the outside uh, livery. In this case, it's just white at this place. But um, you, the, what, when you open the, the flap and uh, to hand out or receive some documents, um, you really see what the plane looks on the outside at this this place. 
So um, <clears throat> that's that's a really really nice thing. Um, yeah. Okay. And with that, I guess I say I'm back to work until March. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. So to, to do to complete this complete uh, totally. So, uh, and I'm really looking forward to to uh, how it how it's received by by the public then. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we just talked about because I, I think this is our first playing the expert series, right? As you remember, maybe um, we talked a lot about the A310 videos that the uh, the I and I builds folks made. And feedback has been great, by the way. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it's all happening. And for, I think for the ATR, we're going to look at something similar. We haven't really decided exactly what, but I think it's a good practice. And I saw a bunch of things about manuals and, and I agree, we need to find a, a single position. So Matt, I think wants to put up the manual for the longitude uh, somewhere. So we'll work on that. Yep. All right, we appreciate you coming on today, Hans. I know a lot of people here are thrilled to see your progress. Thank you again for Thank joining you. us. <laughs> we can't wait for March. All right, so let's move on. Uh, I know now that we've talked about all this, you you have a little, <laughs> a little uh, flipping of the screen here. So I'll go back to that. There we go. Oh, that was just my little the road mappy thing. Yeah. I mean, I like this, right? I, I said that last year, advanced calendars are fun because you open the next doors always in anticipation. So this is what we announced today. AAU1 uh, coming in January, uh, in February, New Zealand and the, the Caribou, and then in March, SIM update, SIM update 12 and the ATR. And then we're going to flip them over as we go. And I think you will be very happy with some of the surprises we're, we have in store. Yeah, fantastic. Um, all right, let's move on then to our final portion of the stream, our final q and A. It's where we'll answer some of your questions. We'll have a discussion about some of the feature requests that we've received on the forums. So at this time, chat, feel free to ask any development related questions. And just a reminder that we have an SDK q and A next Wednesday at the same time this stream was. So if you do have any SDK questions, hold them for that stream because that's when we'll have our SDK team on to chat about what's coming there. So first, I just want to say we reviewed a lot of the foreign questions over the past few weeks. There, there were a lot of great feature requests. I think the overall feeling in the forums, they're asking, you know, what's next? What do you plan on prioritizing? You know, so Jorgen said, I'd love to just run down this list a little bit to some of these questions, get your thoughts on them. Nope. Um, I think as much as you'd like to answer. I mean, I should just say yeah. like planning yeah. is a dynamic thing, right? We always mm. say, <clears throat> You know, if you plan out every minute of your life, then you're not flexible at all. So yeah. we are, we are keeping ourselves agile. That's that is what I would say. So just take it take it from that perspective. We haven't locked everything for the next twelve months. Right. And I have seen as this question come in throughout the past uh, several minutes. More sensitive question is how are things going with the Antonov and two? They know it's a subject that's a bit sensitive to talk about. Oh, I don't know. I mean, Andre is Andre is cool. Andre is mm -hmm. now I don't know if I can or should say, but he's 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 moved and he's uh, situated well in the new location where he's at. We talk, and we are uh, tantalizingly close. So we're talking with with Antonov, mm -hmm. and it's going really well. And you know, I mean, honestly, the way it goes with contracts, you talk for two years and then it takes a day, right? So I think I think we're very very close. So the it could be that the Antonov is one of those next plane things that we flip over. <laughs> no, it is. It is. <laughs> so it's coming, and he's yeah. he's working hard on it. And our, our our team is testing it and everything. So don't don't worry about it. It's coming. Okay. Awesome. All right. So let's get into some of these questions that we are seeing. Um, so some of the feature requests we saw in the forums. Uh, was there any update? We see a question here about ray tracing coming to the sim. Seb, I think this is for you. Uh, so I don't have an ETA. Um, mm -hmm. Team is working on it. Uh, so um, yeah, when we, when we have an ETA, we're gonna talk about it more. Yeah. Um, but right now, yeah, team is working on it. Yeah. And going back to Wasm, I know we announced that's gonna be coming with Sim Update Twelve. Um, some forum users wanted to know what kind of challenges have you encountered that that kind of pushed it out and. Um, 
how's it been kind of trying to implement this on Xbox? I can speak to what I know, which isn't that terribly much. I, I think we, we want to make sure that the consumer experience is good because mm. it's a, it's never been done. Right. So, and, and it's, it's working, but it, the consumer experience wasn't good enough and that requires additional work. And that is what the team is working on. Yeah. So I don't know if you have any more specifics. Yeah, I, I'm not looking into this too much. Yeah, no more than you. Cool. But I know it's a, I mean, I think we should all, once it's done, it's a milestone for console gaming. That is the mm -hmm. thing. And, and so, but but it, it really takes time. We need to get it right. So that's why we moved it to March. We, we tried hard. It was at some point, it was planned for late November. And then we, we basically... So he said, you know what, we're going to do the, the AAU, very specific focused work from working title, which I think is going to delight everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we'll give the other one a little bit more baking time in the oven, which is, I think, good. Yep. Yep. And one of the top voted questions was about water physics. Have we thought about what future improvements to water physics, how planes steer or maneuver in the water, and especially in choppy water? Um, yes, this has been on the backlog for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that generally um, uh, a lot of our time went into helicopters and gliders lately um, and now that we are through this so we have reserved some time for feedback improvements there but uh, yeah we uh, as many things we we have already done a few tweaks and I think the next step into water physics to, is to is to really get it right so um, mm -hmm. um, this is something which is down the road I don't have an ETA but we're, we're starting to look at at, uh, at these things yeah yeah how but you... when we say that, when we say that, like it's the, there are two topics like this that I think are there's probably three seasons, ATR, and, and water. It's all kind of in the yeah, yeah. It's a nice, simple, short word, but the the implications of it all are huge. So it is going to take a good long time. So don't don't expect that. The, you know, don't yeah. be all sad when it does if it doesn't happen in twenty three. Wait, you said ATR? Did you mean ATC? ATC? Okay, ATC. Oh, good morning. Good. Got it. Yep. Yep. That sounds good. So, okay. Here's a, a fun one I saw. So now that gliders are in, what do you think of uh, the future of birds in our sim? You know, they help us find those um, thermals. So have they you thought do, about right? that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's yep. another, it's another one of those mm -hmm. features. You can, you can stick in bird. I mean, I've seen some birds. I've bought some airports that had some birds flying around, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's super simple, right? There's a little script and there's some birds flying around. You could do that. It's just kind of, you know, it's, it's one off nice, but we are a platform. And so we mm -hmm. need to do this systemically right. And that is a lot more work. So I think you'll see that at some point, but again, it's one of those, we talk about it, but it's not been prioritized. There's other things that are more important. Yeah. Um, here's a question here. I know we have don't Mar don't have Marcial, so I don't know if either of you will know this one, but um, this one's about AI traffic specifically. This question is, what's as Sobo doing to ensure both internal AI solutions and those by third parties are not regressed by changes you make? And I think this is in reference to some of the issues that have popped up with the SF uh, SU11 um, and the implications of SimConnect. You want to speak to this sub? Uh, I mean, I think we've introduced the, the fighting, which really helps a lot. I mean, we do as much testing as we can. And then uh, during fighting, there's a lot of stuff which is brought up, which we, and we have longer and longer fighting. So that's really helping. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best, uh, the best way. I mean, we, we, we always do code reviews. We try to not break things, but systems sometimes are so complex um, that you, I mean, you, you can just uh, not see the change, the relationship to another system, change it, break it. And nobody sees it in any QA team. There, there's a few. I mean, there's not just one QA team. There's, there's several. Mm -hmm. And then even sometimes people don't see things during fighting. Um, but yeah, I think fighting has helped us a lot to get uh, out releases that are as as has as little regressions as possible. And then, well, like just uh, right now we're doing fighting on a new hotfix. So, um, um, that's what we're doing uh, on on these topics. Mm -hmm. I I would say, I mean, that came up. Immediately, Kai wrote us an email, mm -hmm. detailed email. Um, and obviously that went straight to the team. So Kai from AIG, right? Um, went straight to the team, team looked at it. So that's, I think that's what we, I mean, what Sebza said is the, is the base point, right? Please play, please play the betas. That's what we're doing them for. We've extended them to multiple months, which I think is good. 
and then getting early enough information. I think on this particular case, we got the information too late. Um, and then we should probably look into why is that. But but in general, I think communication lines are open and then team will do best best possible work to make everything harmonious. Yeah. Thank you both. So I know we talked about this in a previous q and It was, came as a top question again. So when we see roads that look too green um, in the sim, why is that? And how, how do we fix that on the Sobo side? Yes, so um, it's either because in the satellite data, the load is green, which can happen, right? Uh, sometimes, uh, <clears throat> sometimes exposure or, or ambient lighting <clears throat> makes the road being green. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can also be, um, that, so there's a system, you know, when, when you look at some satellite data, sometimes you see cuts, like uh, some pictures are taken in, uh, in the morning, some pictures are taken in the evening or different seasons or different just air color. And, and so there's color cuts. And so there's a system which takes um, um, different satellite images and tries to um, sort of color correct them so that they have a, you don't see the cut anymore. And that also sometimes, well, something which was gray in the satellite data turns a little bit into green um, in order to fix the junction with the next, uh, what is whatever is next to it. And also sometimes this is not, not perfect. So this is stuff where we're doing uh, R and D to try to improve things, and um, and uh, yeah, it, it's going on. And as soon as we have a better solution to fix this, well, we'll we'll, we'll move forward on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Seb. Um, with gliders, are there any plans down the line to add multiplayer for tow planes for the glider pilots, not AI controlled, but actual people? Down the, down the line. Ooh. Down the line. Yep. Okay. It it came up during development, but yeah. just didn't didn't fit. Yeah. Um, another question, do you all plan on doing more future collaborations like what you did with Halo and Top Gun? Mm, mm. Could be some surprises, could be possible. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you. And this is a question, well, question about, do we have any details to share, I think, on the DLSS issue that blurs the cockpit avionics a little bit? I don't know if either you might have. Yoga, I've not looked into this. Yeah. I've, heard, I've, heard, I've heard about it, so yeah. I, I know the team is aware of it. I don't, yeah. unfortunately. That's why we need Masia. Where is that? Man? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I think I think they're looking into it, but mm -hmm. honestly, we were so busy with the 40th, it was kind of. Uh, we are now just now getting back to work and actually like, okay, look ahead, 22. I mean, that's why I made the little grid and all that stuff. So yeah, we'll we'll look into all these things, and we, as you know, we will read the feedback and it'll mm -hmm. be looked at. Yeah. So. So I was certainly aware and in looking into it. Oh, can you. I say one thing? Yes. A couple of people said it. Go for it. So one of the things, like, so I think we had a fantastic year with you all. So thank you for all that. Uh, there's one thing I'm not exactly proud of, which is um, the Tin Cities and World Update Canada. Mm. And I just wanted to assure everybody that we are hard at work to making them better. Okay. And on top of that, I also want to say I am like you quite tired of bridges that I can't fly under. So we are make, <laughs> we put a team on, it's gonna take it's gonna take time, but we put a team on um, on fixing all the 3D bridges, all, all the ones that you can realistically fly under, right? There's little foot bridges and stuff. We're not gonna fix those, but uh, there's a team at Gaia now fixing bridges and we will release them sort of as we go. You know, I, at some point I was like, should we wait? Should we just do one big thing? Like, nah. So I think the first one that's going to come out is the city update one Germany because Gaia has already done fixing all these bridges and they're currently working on Canada. So just know I read all this. It, it hurt. It hurt this time because we honestly we got our we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're like, oh, we have all these cities for Canada, 13 cities. Let's do it. And those things are ginormous and we didn't clean them up well enough. So that that's learnings. I think we hopefully will learn for that next year, but mm -hmm. but it'll be better. Sorry for all the Canadians. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, we appreciate you uh, letting us know an update on that, York. And Pitch we're update. looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a couple more feature requests I saw in the forums. Um, do we plan on increasing the number of Azure ATC voices? It's been talked about. Yeah. I don't know exactly what the timeline is. I know there are more than what we're currently using. Yeah. I think there's sort of a balance to be found with 
you know, there's something we call G4E, gaming for everyone. We're looking for, you know, appropriate representation mm -hmm. and being inclusive, and that's important. So in the context of that, we're, we're looking into all this. Yeah. Um, a few more says particle effects for wipers wiping away rain. Is that something we're considering? Seb, do you know? <laughs> I think I've seen it somewhere. On I've seen line. it too. <laughs> okay, so possibly. <laughs> I don't know where. Yeah. And uh, I'll ask you here, plans to update runway and taxi lighting to look more realistic and positioned correctly? I mean, look, the answer to all these questions is, mm -hmm. I think as we probably know by now, 27 updates in, you know, there's going to be more updates. So we, we are continuously trying to prioritize. That's what the... And I actually have been slacking a little bit on the feedback snapshot, so I'm, I'm going to get back on this with Marcial and, and Seb. Um, we prioritize that way, right? We prioritize on votes often. Like sometimes it takes longer, you know, I think this weather radar thing has been around forever. Same with the photogrammetry cities. And some of these fixes take a long time. But, but in general, when you say something, something comes up, we look at it, put it on the list. And when, whenever we have bandwidth to do it, we do it. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's true for what you just said with the runway lights. Yeah, for sure. certainly. Okay. And one question here about the marketplace, uh, mm -hmm. more so about how it works, the pipeline. So when a third party dev submits their product to the marketplace, what kind of checks or what do we do internally before it gets released out to the public? Oh, well, we ingest it. I mean, the thing, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting topic because I, mm -hmm. at some point, you know, I'm from Germany, as you can probably hear, it's not hard. Um, mm -hmm. I said, you know, this is a worldwide game. We need to translate everything. That's York's general attitude to things. Mm -hmm. And then I said, we need to translate the marketplace. Otherwise, people don't even know what they're buying. And, and, and so I think we're translating it in the 13 languages. And somebody was asking about Korean. Yep, we're doing Korean and all mm -hmm. that. So it's going to be at some point 15 languages. And guess what? that is hard, you know, coordinating because people type, you know, they write their own descriptions and then we have to go blast that out into the world of translations. And until that gets back, that is actually weeks and weeks of, of time. So then the mm. developers are like, hey, I want my, my, I want my stuff out there. And, and we're like, well, we want to translate it. And, and at some point, I'm, I'm actually going to take a look at this again. Do people actually care that it's translated or do, do they want it faster? Because that is that's one of the one of the real issues that is making this slow. Mm -hmm. Another one is just the volume. There's been a shocking amount of of of, of content coming from creators. Mm -hmm. And 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 what's also great is that people are fixing things, they're making them better. So we get more and more and more and more updates. Um which we prioritize when some, for example, when, because the logic is if somebody bought something and there's an update, we need to get it out there ASAP, right? Because they already trusted us or the developer with money. So, and there's a lot of this getting more and more, right? The more items we get. So we are, we mm -hmm. are hiring more people um, on both the program management side and on the dev side to automate more things because mm -hmm. there's just thousands of things and that, that that's what we're doing but we we are fully aware and highly motivated <laughs> to fix this so just yeah. just 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 wait a little bit but we're investing okay good to know thanks york uh yeah see you next faster instead of translating oh, thank you for that feedback chat um i we are coming up to the end here um are there anything that you york or sub would like to say or chat about before we end the stream Vince will answer for VR support. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's going to listen to to little Jordi, but yeah, <laughs> it comes up. It comes up, but it's yeah. you know, nah, I want to. I, I mean, I would just say again, like always, I want to say thank you for being with us and to mm -hmm. being on the journey. And it's a, it really is a journey, and I think it's it's kind of shocking to say it's been twenty seven months, but it's been super fun. And looking ahead next year, I think you saw the chock full calendar of goodies. And I think it's going to be a great year of, 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 um, of simming and, yeah. and for aviation in general. So I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely, I couldn't be more excited. The 40th was awesome. The event was awesome. The love from everybody doesn't get any better. You know, some people like there's some reporters that ask me, hey, so, you know, what's next? And are you, are you? are you done with flights and I was like we're just at the beginning of things and it I couldn't be happier we're working with a dedicated community who actually care or in York language give a shit 
and and mm -hmm. we get to we get to make things better and make people happy it doesn't get it doesn't get better than this it's the best job ever so thank you thank you Jorg. all right we'll wrap it up here thank you so much to everyone who made this stream today and contributed um feel free to stick around though i'll be transitioning to our community fly in friday with me cd peter and symptom everyone's welcome to fly along no matter your skill level or platform and thank you again Jorg seb as well as matt and hans for joining us today um, we'll see you at our next developer stream in a few months so everyone have a great holiday and stay tuned for a special video and then a community fly in Hi, oh, everyone no. not the video <laughs> bye everyone thank you all have a wonderful holiday man is no longer earthbound he drives the airways with a thrust of bright propellers and the flash of gleaming wings. Flying, if you haven't flown, it's a beautiful thing. When you talk to pilots, about 50% of them tell you that their first touch point was Microsoft Flight Simulator. You have 1,000 feet aperture, 172.10 The newest, the largest, and the fastest planes in the world. A new age begins. We are here at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum in McMinnville, Oregon, to celebrate the 40th anniversary edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator. We have over 30 creators and press from all over the world that have come to be here for part of the special event. It's all about celebrating the history of aviation. One of the fascinating things of aviation is that it's been around for 120 years and Microsoft Flight Simulator has been for 40 years, so a third of that time. What's standing tall in the history of aviation is the Spruce Goose. Only one person has ever flown the Spruce Goose. And what's nice about this is after today, anybody can. Getting to see all the different things that you can do in Microsoft Flight Sim, it makes me happy as a pilot. The team actually talked a lot about what made it endure, why, why 40 years. And we think it's because it stayed true to its vision. And the vision is to achieve realism, accuracy, and authenticity of flight. I feel like I'm flying and I feel like I'm getting to see the world. That's why people play this game. Now that we have become even more accessible by going to Xbox, and with Xbox everywhere, pretty much on any machine, I think we are democratizing the dream of flight. It's a dream that has been with mankind for a long, long time. <laughs>